Hi guys, and welcome back to our channel. And if you are new here, welcome. I'm Heather from Mindset Made Better. In today's video, we are talking about how to deal with controlling people. But before we jump into it, if you love personal growth and self-improvement, then you have come to the right place. Each week we put out a video that goes along with our articles over on mindsetmadebetter.com. And over there we have daily posts of great quotes and we apply those teachings to our modern times. So if you enjoy this kind of content, please subscribe to our channel. Today's quote is, people who feel the need to control others don't have control over themselves. Let me just read that again because I don't think we think about this enough when it happens. People who feel the need to control others don't have control over themselves. The need to control others is born out of insecurity, anxiety, fear, and low self-esteem. If someone feels out of control emotionally or mentally and cannot regulate their own feelings, they turn outward to get that sense of control and security from something external, typically another person. Their sense of self-esteem and well-being is dependent on the reassurances that control gives them. However, they never really have control over someone else and any morsel of control that they do have is very short-lived. And when they perceive any sense of losing control, the cycle starts again because they desperately need that external reassurance by having control to feel secure. These people are highly outcome dependent and will go to great lengths to get their needs met by controlling others. The desire to control others can come from many places. Perhaps one feels uncertain about the future and feels that they're powerless in their situation, so they seek to control others around them so that they feel more certain. Someone who fears abandonment may try to control their significant other so that he or she doesn't leave them. They may constantly test the waters by behaving poorly to see if their partner will leave them or stick around and they'll actually feel reassured when they don't leave them. But ironically, this kind of behavior ends up pushing the other away and creating a self-fulfilling prophecy of abandonment. Someone who secretly feels like a fraud may try to control others' impressions of them because they fear being found out and rejected or abandoned. Now these are all ineffective thought patterns that cannot be changed by anything external. It can only be addressed within. But the tricky thing about this kind of behavior is that it is typically deeply ingrained in people. They learned as a child that how you feel loved, safe, and secure is through controlling others. They were taught as a child that they get their needs met through manipulation and influence. And if that's the only way they know how to get their needs met, it's going to take some serious time and consistent effort to reprogram their brain to get their needs met in a healthier way. When someone attempts to control you, remember that it's born out of a feeling of lack that they feel within themselves. They may project confidence, but underneath the surface is insecurity. Remember, their behavior has everything to do about how they feel about themselves and nothing to do with you. Here are some steps that you can take when responding to someone who is trying to control you. Number one, communicate with them about how their behavior is impacting you. Use I statements instead of you statements. Number two, offer to help brainstorm alternatives to the controlling behavior. Like I mentioned previously, controllers don't often know how else to get their needs met. By offering up ways you prefer they interact with you, they can understand a healthier, more effective way to get their needs met. For example, if your partner has a habit of committing your time to things before asking you about it, tell him or her to ask you first so you can check your calendar. Number three, understand what you really want and respond accordingly. Don't just give in to a controller's demand to keep the peace. If a boundary needs to be set, this is the time to set it. Be clear and firm with your boundary. Number four, don't get sucked into debating your feelings or why what you feel is valid. How you feel is valid and you don't need the other person to agree. Remember that they derive a sense of security and safety by controlling other people. They will see you asserting yourself as a power struggle. If they don't like what they're hearing from you, they will be highly motivated to wear you down so you agree with them and they feel better. As tempting as it may be to end the conversation and just agree, 
If you do, you are teaching them that this tactic will work on you and it will be repeated. If they keep trying to get you to engage, simply tell them that you will both have to agree to disagree or that it is what it is and end the conversation. All right, guys, that is all I have for this video. Thank you so much for spending time with me today, and I hope that you found this video helpful. If you did like it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel, and be sure to hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our weekly videos. Until next time, stay healthy, stay positive, and remember that people who try to control you feel out of control themselves. While they're operating from a place of lack, it isn't your job to fix it for them or tolerate controlling behaviors. We'll see you next time.